wonder pages 144 to 157 ex friends bleeding scream what the heck summer dawson has always been a bit out there but this was too much all i did was ask her why august was acting like he was mad at me or something i figured she would know and all she said was bleeding scream i don't even know what that means it's so weird because one day me and august were friends and the next day whoosh, he was hardly talking to me and i haven't this, had the slightest idea why when i said to him hey august you mad at me or something he shrugged and walked away so i would take that as a definite yes and since i know for a fact that i didn't do anything to him to be mad about i figured summer could tell me what's up but all i got from her was bleeding scream yeah big help thanks summer you know i've got plenty of other friends in school so if august wants to officially be my ex-friend that's fine by me see if i care i've started ignoring him like he's ignoring me in school now this is actually kind of hard since we sit next to each other in practically every class other kids have noticed and have started asking me if august and i have had a fight nobody asks august what's going on hardly anyone talks to him anyway i mean the only person he hangs out with other than me is summer sometimes he hangs out with reed kingsley a little bit and the two maxes got him playing dungeons and dragons a couple of times at recess charlotte for all her goody two-shoeing doesn't ever do more than nod hello when she's passing him in the hallway and i don't know if everyone's still playing the plague behind his back because no one ever really told me about it directly but my point is that it's not like he has a whole lot of other friends he could be hanging out with instead of me he won't, if he wants to diss me he's the one who loses not me so this is how things are between us now we only talk to each other about school stuff if we absolutely have to like i'll say what did reuben say the homework was and he'll answer or he'll be like can i use your pencil sharpener and i'll get my sh pencil sharpener out of my pencil case for him but as soon as the bell rings we go our separate ways why is this good because i get to ha hang out with a lot more kids now before when i was hanging out with august all the time kids weren't hanging out with me because they'd have to hang out with him or they would keep things from me like the whole thing about the plague i think i was the only one who wasn't in on it except for summer and maybe the D, D crowd and the truth is though no one's that ob obvious about it no one wants to hang out with him everyone's way too hung up on being in the popular group and he's just as far from the popular group as you can get but now i can hang out with anyone i want if i wanted to be in the popular group i could totally be in the popular group why is this bad well a i don't actually enjoy hanging out with the popular group that much and b i actually liked hanging out with august so this is kind of messed up and it's all august's fault snow the first snow of the winter hit right before thanksgiving break school was closed so we got an extra day of vacation i was glad about that because i was so bummed about this whole august thing and i just wanted some time to chill out with have without having to see him every day also waking up to a snow day is just about my favorite thing in the world i love that feeling when you first open your eyes in the morning and you don't even know why everything seems different than usual then it hits you everything is quiet no cars honking no buses going down the street then you run over to the window and outside everything is covered in white the sidewalks the trees the cars on the street your window panes and when that happens on a school day you find out your school is closed well i don't care how old i get i'm always going to think that that's the best feeling in the world and i'm never going to be one of those grown-ups that uses an umbrella when it snows ever dad's school was closed too so he took me and jamie sledding down skeleton skeleton hill in the park they say a little kid broke his neck while sliding down that hill a few years ago but i don't know if this is actually true or just one of those legends on the way home i spotted this banged up wooden sled kind of propped up against the old indian rock monument dad said to leave it that it was just garbage but something told me it would make the greatest sled ever so dad let me drag it home and i spent the rest of the day fixing it up 
I super glued the broken slats together and wrapped some heavy duty white duct tape around them for extra strength. Then I spray painted the whole thing white with the paint I had gotten for the alabaster sphinx I was making for the Egyptian museum project. When it was all dry, I painted lightning in gold letters in the middle piece of the wood, and I made little lightning bolt symbols around the letters. It looked pretty professional, I have to say. Dad was like, wow, Jackie, you were right about that sled. The next day, we went back to Skeleton Hill with lightning. It was the fastest thing I've ever ridden. So, so, so much faster than the plastic sleds we'd been using. And because it had gotten warmer outside, the snow had become crunchier and wetter. Good packing snow. Me and Jamie took turns on lightning all afternoon. We were in the park until our fingers were frozen and our lips had turned a little blue. Dad practically had to drag us home. By the end of the weekend, the snow had started turning gray and yellow, and then a rainstorm turned most of the snow to slush. When we got back to school on Monday, there was no snow left. It was a rainy and yucky first day back from vacation. A slushy day. That's how I was feeling inside, too. I nodded hey to August for the first time I'd seen him. We were in front of the lockers. He nodded hey back. I wanted to tell him about lightning, but I didn't. Fortune favors the bold. Mr. Brown's December pre precept was fortune favors the bold. We were all supposed to write a paragraph about some time in our lives when we did something very brave and how, because of it, something good happened to us. I thought about this a lot, to be truthful. I have to say that I think the bravest thing I ever did was become friends with August. But I couldn't write about that, of course. I was afraid we'd have to read these out loud, or Mr. Brown would put them up on the bulletin board like he does sometimes. So instead, I wrote this lame thing about how I used to be afraid of the ocean when I was little. It was dumb, but I couldn't think of anything else. I wondered what August wrote about. He probably had a lot, to, lot of things to choose from. Private school. My parents are not rich. I say this because people sometimes think that everyone who goes to private school is rich, but that isn't true with us. Dad's a teacher and mom's a social worker, which means they don't have all those jobs where people make gazillions of dollars. We used to have a car, but when we but we sold it when Jamie started kindergarten at Beecher Prep. We don't have a big townhouse or one of those dormant buildings along the park. We live on the top floor of a five-story walk-up we rent from an old lady named Dona Petra all the way on the other side of Broadway. That's the code for the section of North River Heights where people don't want to park their cars. Me and Jamie share a room. I overhear my parents talk about things like, can we do without an air conditioner one more year? Or maybe I can work two jobs this summer. So today at recess, I was hanging out with Julian and Henry and Miles. Julian, who everyone knows is rich, was like, I hate that I have to go to back to Paris this Christmas. It's so boring. Dude, but it's like Paris, I said like an idiot. Believe me, it's so boring, he said. My grandmother lives in this house in the middle of nowhere. It's like an hour away from Paris in this tiny, tiny village. I swear to God, nothing happens there. I mean, it's like, oh, wow, there's another fly on the wall. Look, there's a new dog sleeping on the sidewalk. Yuppie. I laughed. Sometimes Julian could be very funny. Though my parents are talking about throwing a big party this year instead of going to Paris. I hope so. What are you doing over break? said Julian. Just hanging out, I said. You are so lucky, he said. I hope it snows again, I answered. I got this new sled. It is so amazing. I was about to tell them about lightning, but Miles started talking first. I got a new sled, too, he said. My dad got it from the Hamacher Schlemmer. It's so state-of-the-art. How could a sled be state-of-the-art, said Julian? It was like $800 or something. Whoa. We should all go sledding and have a race down Skeleton Hill, I said. That hill is so lame, answered Julian. Are you kidding, I said. Some kid broke his neck there. That's why it's called Skeleton Hill. Julian narrowed his eyes and looked at me like I was the biggest moron in the world. It's called Skeleton Hill because it was an ancient Indian burial ground. Duh, he said. 
Anyway, it should be called Garbage Hill now. It's so freaking junky. Last time I was there, it was so gross. Like with soda cans and broken bottles and stuff. He just shook his head. I left my old sled there, Miles said. It was the crappiest piece of junk. And someone took it, too! Maybe a hobo wanted to go sledding, laughed Julian. Where did you leave it? I asked. By the big rock at the bottom of the hill. I went back the next day and it was gone. I couldn't believe someone actually took it. Here's what we can do, said Julian. Next time it snows, my dad could drive us all up to this golf course in Westchester that makes Skeleton Hill look like nothing. Hey, Jack, where are you going? I started to walk away. I've got to get a book out of my locker, I lied. I just wanted to get away from them fast. I didn't want anyone to know that I was the hobo who had taken the sled. In Science I'm not actually the greatest student in the world. I know some kids actually like school, but honestly, I can't say I do. I like some parts of school, like P.E. and computer class, and lunch and recess, but all in all, I'd be fine without school. And the thing I hate the most about school is all the homework we get. It's not enough that we have to sit through class after class trying to stay awake while they fill our heads with all this stuff we will probably never need to know, like how to figure out the surface area of a cube, or what the difference is between kinetic and potential energy. I'm like, who cares? I've never heard, of, heard my parents say the word kinetic in my entire life. I hate science most of all. We get so much work, it's not even funny. And the teacher, Ms. Rubin, is so strict about everything, even the way we write our headings on the top of our papers. I once got two points off a homework assignment because I didn't put the date on top. Crazy stuff. When me and August were still friends, I was doing okay in science because August sat next to me and always let me copy his notes. August had the neatest handwriting of anyone I've ever seen who's a boy. Even his script is neat up and down perfectly, with really small, round, loopy letters. But now we're ex-friends, it's bad, because I can't ask him to let me copy his notes anymore. So I was kind of scrambling today to take notes about Ms. what Ms. Rubin was saying. My handwriting is awful. When all of a sudden, she started talking about the fifth grade science fair project, how we all had to choose a science project to work on. While she was saying this, I was thinking, we just finished the freaking Egyptian project. Now we have to start on a whole new thing? And then in my head I was going, Oh no! Like that kid in Home Alone with his mouth hanging open? And his hands on his face? That was the face I was making on the inside. And then I thought of those pictures of melting ghost faces I've seen somewhere. Where the mouths are open and wide and they're screaming. And then all of a sudden this picture flew into my head and this memory and I knew what summer meant by bleeding scream. It was so weird how it just came to me in this flash. Someone in our homeroom had dressed up in a bleeding scream costume on Halloween. I remember seeing him a few desks away from me and then I remember not seeing him again. Oh man, it was August. All of this hit me in science class while the teacher was talking. Oh man, I had been talking to Julian about August. Oh, man. Now I understood. I was so mean. I don't even know why. I don't even... I'm not even sure what I said, but it was bad. It was only a minute or two. It's just that I knew Julian and everyone thought I was so weird for hanging out for August with August all the time, and I felt stupid. I don't know why I said that stuff. I was just going along. I was stupid. I am stupid. Oh, God, he was supposed to come as Boba Fett. I would have never said that stuff in front of Boba Fett. But that was him, the bleeding scream, sitting at the desk looking over at us. The long white mask with the fake squirting blood. The mouth wide open, like the ghoul was crying. That was him. I felt like I was going to puke.